Hello everyone, my name is Raphael and welcome to Network Engineer Pro. In this video, we're gonna talk about routers, how they function and what the role is inside of a network, so let's get right into it. A router can be a physical or virtual appliance that passes or routes information between two or more different computer networks. When it comes to the OSI model, routers are associated with layer three, which is the network layer. A router is considered a gateway or a default gateway in its position where two or more networks meet. A PC on network A, needing to send traffic to network B will send it to its default gateway to get routed. So let's take a Windows PC for example. You open the command prompt and you type in IP config. The IP address inside the default gateway field is gonna be the IP of an interface on a router. Let's look at this diagram really quick to help make more sense of it. All right guys, here's a topology and before we get started, I just wanna explain really quick about what's going on. So if you look over here on the left, we have PC1. PC1 has an IP 1.1.1.1 and a MAC address of all A's. That makes it a member of network 1.1.1.0 slash 24. On the right hand side, we have PC2. PC2 has an IP 2.2.2.2 and a MAC address of all D's. That makes it a member of network 2.2.2.0 slash 24. Each PC connects up to a switch. PC1 connects to switch one, PC2 connects to switch two. Each of these switches connect to a router, router R1. And on the left, we have interface E00 with IP 1.1.1.254 and a MAC of all these. This IP or interface is going to be the default gateway for PC1. On the right hand side, we have interface E0 slash 1. Interface E01 has an IP of 2.2.2.254 and a MAC address of all C's. And you guessed it, it is the default gateway for PC2. Now, we want to see what happens when PC1 wants to send data over to PC2. Now, PC1's ready to send some data. It could be anything, an HTTP get, a file, um, a picture, it doesn't matter. Let's just say for simplicity, a PNG. Now, when PC1 builds this packet, it's going to take the data and it's going to put an IP header. And since we're using IPv4, we're going to put an IPv4 header. And there's a lot of fields inside the IPv4 header like TTL and a lot of other things, but for now, to keep it simple, we only care about the source and destination IP address. The source IP is gonna be the IP of PC1, which is 1.1.1.1. The destination IP is gonna be the IP of PC2. So 2.2.2.2. Now we're gonna take our data and we're gonna take our IP header and we're gonna put it inside of an ethernet frame. Now, there's a lot of fields inside the ethernet frame as well, but for now, all we care about are the source and destination MAC address. The source MAC address is gonna be the MAC address of PC1, which in our case is A, 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 A. Now, what about the destination MAC address? What's the destination MAC address gonna be? You're probably thinking it's gonna be the MAC of PC2, but it's not. Now, when a PC wants to send data to a network outside of its own, to a completely different network, it's gonna send it to its default gateway. So if there's any MAC address that PC1 needs, it's the MAC address of its default gateway, which we know is BBBB. But does PC1 know that MAC address? Let's assume that it doesn't. There's a process called ARP, very important process. Stands for the Address Resolution protocol. PC1 needs an ARP entry in its ARP table that maps the IP of its default gateway 1.1.1.254 to MAC address B, 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 B. To get this information, we need to send an ARP request. An ARP request is basically a broadcast message that gets sent out on the LAN asking, hey, whoever has IP 1.1.1.254, please give me your MAC address because I really, really need it. Now, like I said, that message is a broadcast message. So if you were to look at a packet capture, the destination MAC address in the ethernet frame is gonna be all Fs. That means that when switch one gets the broadcast, so it's gonna go like this. The broadcast message is gonna go up towards switch one. Switch one is gonna flood it out of every single interface it has, except the one it arrived on. 
So if we had another PC here, like PC3, PC3 would get the broadcast, but it would realize it's not for him and drop it. The broadcast is going to continue its way up to router 1. Router 1 is going to get the broadcast and say, oh snap, I have IP 1.1.1.254. Here's the MAC address info you requested. Now router 1 is going to go ahead and send the MAC address information in an ARP reply directly over to PC1. And it's going to add the MAC address and IP binding to its ARP cache. Now by default, ARP caches on Cisco routers are 4 hours. So now that we have a valid ARP entry, now that we know that 1.1.1.254 maps to a MAC address or a data link layer address of BBBB, we can finish building the frame. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and put inside the destination MAC address field BBBB. Great. So now that everything here is properly built, we can send it on the wire. PC1 is going to send it over to switch one. Switch one is going to get the Ethernet frame and switches have MAC address tables. They learn MAC addresses. They do forwarding. They do flooding. I'll go into detail on how they do that exactly in another video, but let's keep it simple for now. Just know that they build MAC address tables. Now switch one is going to get the Ethernet frame and it's going to look at its MAC address table. So we'll just call this MAC table. That's what switches do. They learn MAC addresses. So all of these devices like PC1 and router one plugged into the switch, when they start sending data, the switch is going to record the MAC address. So the MAC address of AAAA, and it's going to say, okay, MAC address AAAA lives on ethernet 04. So in the MAC address table, you're going to have entries like AAAA out of interface E zero slash four. MAC address B, 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 B lives on Ethernet 0 slash 14. So when, it, so when switch one gets it, it's going to look at the Ethernet frame and it's going to see a destination MAC address of all Bs. It's going to look at its MAC address table and say, okay, I know where BBBB is. It's on Ethernet 0 14. It's going to send it right out of Ethernet 0 14. Now, router one gets the message. It, it's going to look at the Ethernet frame and it's going to say, okay, the destination MAC address BBBB, that's me. That's my interface. Let me look at it further. It's going to look at the IP header inside the packet. It's going to see that the destination IP address is 2.2.2.2. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to look at its IP addresses configured on, on the interfaces and say, do I have an interface configured with IP 2.2.2.2? I don't. So I need to route it. I need to consult my routing table and see if I know about that network. So a routing table is basically a, a database of networks and, and a pointer. So either an interface on where to send it or a next top IP. So again, router one is going to look at the destination IP address of 2.2.2.2 and say, all right, do I know about this network? Great. Yes, I do. I know about network 2.2.2.0. It's a directly connected network out of interface E01. So I have the two important pieces of information that I need. I know about the network and I know where to send it. Great. Now something very important happens now. This is going to be called frame rewrite. So when router one originally got the ethernet frame, it had a source MAC address of PC one, all A's and a destination MAC address of its default gateway. It's going to trash that it's going to rewrite it. And the source MAC address this time is going to be the egress interface on the router to get to this network. So if we want to reach the 2.2.2.0 slash 24 network, we're going to use interface E01. So the MAC address of interface E01 of all C's is going to be our new source MAC address. What's our destination MAC address going to be? Well, it's going to be the MAC address of PC2. And how did router one know about the MAC address of PC2? He ARPed for it, just like PC1 did in the beginning. So router one has an ARP cache and its ARP cache says two, dot two dot two dot two maps to a mac address of d d d d and because i have this information i can properly build the new ethernet frame so now now that everything's built it's going to send it out over to switch two switch two is going to get it switch two is going to do the same thing switch one did it's going to look at its mac address table 
Switch 2 has been sitting here all day learning MAC addresses. It knows that PC2 is connected. It knows that router 1 is connected. And it knows the MAC address and what port to send it out of. So Switch 2 is going to say, all right, I received an Ethernet frame with a destination MAC address of all these. In my MAC address table, I have a entry saying that the MAC address, all these, is connected to port E0 slash 4. It sends it out over to PC2 and everyone is happy. Now, all these ARP entries, like I said, these are cached. Now on Cisco devices, they're cached for four hours. So the whole ARP process of broadcast, of ARP, ARP requests and ARP replies, that doesn't need to happen again. Now, there are some details about how switches learn MAC addresses and the floor forwarding and flooding of uh, frames. I'll go into that into a, uh, I'll go into detail on that in another video, but I just wanted to keep it simple for the purpose of routing. Now, over here is a snippet of a show IP route. I actually have this entire topology set up in my lab. So let's go ahead and look at the CLI and let's do our first show command of the day, show IP route. All right, so here's a topology that we've been working with the entire video. So let's go ahead and execute our first show command, show IP route. Now, before I hit enter, if I hit question mark, I get the context sensitive help. So if I only wanted to see connected routes or EIGRP routes, I could specify that, which is really nice because some routers have hundreds of thousands of routes. And if you only wanted to see what's important to you, you can. So let's just hit enter and look at everything. So right now I only have connected routes. So you can see here, here's a list of networks. You have, um, you have your connected routes, you have your local routes. Local routes are created whenever you create an interface and give it an IP, a local route gets created. But let's say for example, you were looking at the routing table and you forgot what L means. You could look at the codes, which is kind of like a legend and say, okay, capital L, oh, that means local routes. Or if you see a C, the letter C, you can look here and find, okay, where's C? Oh, cool. C's here, C's, C means connected. Great. So that's really cool. So once we start talking about routing in detail and routing protocols, we'll get more into this. I'm going to show you guys how to read the entire routing table, depending on what kind of routes are there. So don't even worry. It might look confusing now, but it'll make sense soon. Okay. So just to sum it up, PC one sent a packet over to router one. It arrived on the E 0 interface of router one. Router one looked at the destination IP address of 2.2.2.2, discovered that it was not a configured interface on the router itself and determined it needs to be routed. So based on that destination IP address of 2.2.2.2, router one looked at its routing table and said, let me see if I have a route. Perfect. I do. Here's the route right here. It's directly connected right at an interface E01. I have the network. I know exactly where to send it. And it does this at lightning speed. Now, routers can contain different types of routes, such as connected routes, static routes, which you have to sit there and enter manually, or even dynamic routes, which are learned from dynamic routing protocols like OSPF and EIGRP and more. All right, so for this video and the next few I'm working on, I wanted to keep them simple to help build a foundation. So stay tuned because we'll go more into detail on things like analyzing IP headers and ethernet frames, what a switch is, what happens to a TTL as it goes from router to router, then we take all that stuff and we put it together and we start doing the fun stuff like spanning tree, configuring routing protocols, breaking them and fixing them and so on. All right, everyone, to sum up what we did today, we covered what a router is, how they work, and even some hands on the CLI using our show command, show IP route. I really hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below because the next one is coming out soon. Also, I'm gonna be releasing a lot more content in the future like more videos, webinars, free courses, protocol cheat sheets, and more. So if you want to stay up to date and be a part of that, go to networkengineerpro.com, which I put a link into the description of the video. Click get notified so you can get the newsletter and be the first to know what I'm working on and when it comes out. That's all for now. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you in the next video.